It's been a long road. Now, I, I, I don't know if a 30-day rehab would actually rehabilitate you. Because I always think, and the first time I ever knew anything about rehab, there was this movie called New Jack City. And there was this lovable character by the name of Pookie who went to rehab. So that was my first time with a like grasping what rehab was. And I always thought, and like this has always stuck with me, even as an adult, even though I know it's not true. When Pookie went to rehab and got out and got back on that stuff, that's why you hear me always say, once a junkie, always a junkie. That's instilled in my brain because I seen the first time that I was able to comprehend what rehab was, it was Pookie. So that's why I got to saying, once a junkie, always a junkie, because Pookie couldn't shake that shit. So when you hear me say that, that's just because as a kid, I was traumatized by seeing Pookie on that rock. She went from prom queen to prom fiend. But Carlton is in here. What up, Simone? I'm just telling the truth. That was my first time knowing what rehab was. My older cousin was like, nah, he went to rehab. I was wondering, what is he doing in there? Like, why are they putting him in the bed and he's sweating? They were like, he's in rehab. So that was my first time knowing what rehab was. So Carlton is in here and he's finally getting out. He did a step uh, five or I don't even know what I remember. He used to say 12 step program. But I think that's to get off cigarettes. But anyway, he was in there. He was talking about what he got going on and he's finally free. Now, when you've been locked up like this, let me tell you, when I got out of basic training, that was eight weeks of pure bull schniggity. Man, you looking for whatever you can, whatever you can do. Now, in real life, it doesn't happen like this. In real life, for for ninety five percent of us gentlemen, attractive women aren't coming after us after we didn't got up out some bullshit. So, in real life, what Carlton got going on, this probably ain't gonna happen to you, brother. So, don't think you're gonna go to rehab and come out with a. You're not. You're gonna go to rehab. You're gonna come out. And niggas are gonna look at you like you a junkie. <laughs> but anyway, Carlton, uh, he's in here. Him and Amir, they've been getting close, and she's pushing up on him. But of course, what up, King Drip? But of course, we hear Yo, Carlton, open up in there. I know you in there. Will the overexcited, too much energy ass nigga opens up the door. That's why you always gotta lock the door. Even when I go to my mama's house. When I go visit my parents, I lock the door. Sometimes I put the chair up on the door because they just want to walk in like I'm a little kid or something. I'm fucking almost 40 years old. Don't be coming in here. Y'all knock on that door. Oh, hey, were you up? We make a breakfast. All right, I'll be down there when I be down there. Don't be look, I'm on vacation. Don't be waking me up. I get up when I get up. I'm at where I'm at. I'm gonna be where I be. So Carlton and the mirror, they were about to get it in. It's been 30 days. And she said he has some pent up frustration. I'm like, oh, I know what that is. You got to get rid of that demon. But Will busts in the door. She got to go into the bathroom. He talking about, let me go grab your sweater. I'm like, whoa, 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 Will. Go grab my sweater. I grab my own sweater now. So this is the first time we see Amira. She's in there. Now they take Carlton home. We already talked about. Ashley and how Ashley was grilling them, cold grilling them at the dinner table. But we also know that they put a lock, a padlock. You know how much money you got to have to have a padlock? Someone give me the cost of what a padlock, a digital padlock for a door, a glass door in your house would cost. I'm thinking this padlock, this security to get in here was at least a, a smooth $1,200, maybe $1,500 because of the area that they're in. But anyway, they put a padlock on the damn wine. You know, hey, you know what I would do if I went to my parents' house and they had a lock on the wine? Uh, Hey, Dad. I know Mama got that wine locked up. What's the code? Hell, I, I don't know. Like, come on, Pops. Come on, Pops. You ain't got the code to the wine? My dad don't drink, got diabetes. You know, he ain't been, he ain't drinking 27 years. 
Yeah, come on, Pops. What's the key? What's, what's the password? So Carlton's in here. He's getting adjusted. He's looking around. He's like, damn. It's kind of messed up. Do you think that the Banks family, what, they were all right for that? I mean, I, I get it. Carlton is a habitual goddamn liar and a drinker. I mean, I guess it was good. I guess it was good for the fam. Plus, no one in the house is old enough to drink. Well, Hillary is back now, but she's still kind of part-time in the influencer house. So she comes over every now and then. So she might have a code. But after this, Carlton feels awkward. Ashley calls him out on what was going on in actual um, rehab. So now he's feeling bad. But one thing I did like was when Carlton and Hillary were talking to each other. Now, remember, they haven't always been close. Even in the old, the OG Bel Air, they were never really that close. They were always on to their own thing. But for them to come together, and even while she was traveling with LaMarcus, she was getting him things like, okay, this is a book that I got. He was talking about, <laughs> I wanted some porn. Hey, yo, your sister's not buying you that. Big booty freaks. They're not getting that. <laughs> but one thing Carlton does say, even though Ashley called him out, I thought this was cool because this is this is your family at the end of the day. He told Hillary, look out for Ashley because they aren't as close as he wants to be with his sister. And he knows that he was wrong for what he did. And he's been regretting that ever since. Because after he got that sober mind, he's like, man... I shouldn't have treated Ashley like that, but that was that craving. That was that itch. So I, I like that. And we do see him and Ashley. She hugs him, but she's still upset about what happened. Now, what's another major point? We know that they went and met Lou. That that's not really important for Carlton. Oh, Princeton. Carlton really can't be mad. And I, I'll say this about Aunt Viv. I'm glad she told Carlton the truth. I'm glad she told Carlton, hey, everything that you do, all of your actions, there's consequences for it. We can't look at Carlton as the victim here. Yeah, you're young and you were dependent on these drugs, but these are choices you've made. And these choices are going to have consequences, whether you like them or not. And that's why I always say, man, even what you did when you were young, it's always going to stick with you. Yeah, you can grow and get past it. But Aunt Viv was right a thousand percent here. She like Carlton. It's over with. Maybe it'll open up later on. But right now, you just got to get yourself together. And I know there's a moment also, I'm just throwing it all together, where she's telling Carlton, where he's like, man, I don't even have freedom in my own home. Because they took the doors. They took the doors off of the damn the door. And the doors off the door. They took the doors off the hinges. They want to see everything that he got going on in here. Because remember, he used to have dope in the drawers. So it's like, damn, Carlton, this is all because of you, man. But I know Carlton is hurt because of the Princeton. I'm trying to think, is there an example I could use for one moment? I'm like, man, damn, I fucked up. But I don't ever look at life like that. If I mess up and ruin something... An opportunity. I just look at, hey man, I gotta take the next one. So I never have no, no. I don't know, man. I just as a young kid, I never set goals in life. Maybe like milestones, but never set any. I, me personally, I don't set any goals because if I don't reach it, then I fail. It's just little milestones. So if I reach them, it's like okay, that's good. That's a little achievement, but keep on pushing. But Carlton got to understand, hey man, ain't no Princeton. Your sponsor backed out. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to, hey, no more recommendation. Hey, Mo, Carlton's out. Hey, yeah, tell him to send that letter of recommendation over, man. We, we don't want him over here no more. We don't want him over here. We don't know what he on. So Carlton's heard about this. And him, and him and Will wouldn't have that kind of relationship if Carlton never flipped out on him. Carlton always got to flip out on Will at least once a season. 
once a season, he got to give Will a piece of his mind. Because remember, Will, he messed up his interview with Q. And this is why we got to see Carlton go and put that word in for him. But Carlton did admit, even though whatever he has going on, Will has always been there for him. They fight, but that's what family members do, especially when you're close to somebody. When you love somebody, you're going to fight. You're going to get into it with each other. He's like, you know what, Will? That's some bullshit. I lost Princeton. I'm like, all right, Carlton, my bad, brother. It's the parents' home. They could take the doors off. Man, if my parents ever, if my parents, listen, if my parents ever would have told me they taking the doors off of my damn, the door hinges, I wouldn't have been at that house. Shit, fuck it. This is how we living. We living raw. We living like savages. I'm gone. I got to go. I can't live in this house. Sometimes I like to sleep naked. I can't be in this house with the door wide open. You get the breeze from in the hallway. People walk in, the light on in the hall. Oh, no, I need the door on my shit. I'm going to go sleep in the basement then. <laughs> be right in the basement, knocked out. Well... When I was in high school, our basement wasn't finished. My dad didn't finish the basement until after we all graduated and moved out. Like, you, woo, I ain't even gonna say it. You, summer mama. Let me see. What's another significant moment for Kylie Carl? He picks Will up for basketball. See, I can't wait, to be honest, I can't wait till we get to episode four where we could just talk about that one episode and then we could break down everything that they did. Because right now, I'm just really trying to jump around and get their key moments. Because we already at, what, an hour and a half? Jeez Louise. I, I gotta, are we good at this pace or y'all? do I need to speed it up a little bit? We already had an hour and a half. We only got three characters talked about. We could do, well, damn, Viv got her own. Oh, it ain't nothing left. It's just Phil, Viv, and Hillary. Oh, we good. We good. We good. We, 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 we all right. <laughs> Act right in the door, stay up. Man, look at me. Look at me. Now leave, uh, now leave YouTube and take a picture of yourself and look at yourself. If you were to look at who's going to be on the bullshit, I'm pretty sure it's going to be me. Hit the yak. Come on, young champ. <laughs> I got the yak over there. All right. After we get done with Carlton's story, I might bring the yak over. We might do one or two shots, and then we'll, we'll turn this thing up for Aunt Viv, because I got some words for Aunt Viv. Uncle Phil fucking up, too. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So Carlton, he didn't get the job at Princeton. Nothing really happens with Carlton at the uh, at the job that they got where they working at the damn country club. Nothing's really going on there. That's more Will networking. Oh, the manager is talking to Will. So Carlton, other than him in the mirror, that's really the only highlights of his story. Um, oh, Aunt Viv. Do I got a photo of Aunt Viv? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they never took my car away. They never, that's one thing they never took away was my car. Your boy had to get around. My first car was an Acura, 1988 gold Acura on some uh, 16s. I ended up getting, um, <laughs> pause. I ended up getting rear end by like a 19 freaking 70 something car, an old steel car, tore the back up, the back right. And then my back door. The frame was bent, but they could they they fixed it just enough. But when the door, you had to like slam the door to close it. My back passenger door. I had an '88 Acura. That was my second car because my first car was a Cutlass. But you know, it was it was some work that needed to be done with that. But then I got the '88 Acura Legend. And then after that, I got the '95 Acura Legend. Then I got a Chevy S10. Then I got my 
2001 limited edition Tahoe. And then from there, I moved over here. I got a 98 Mitsubishi Charisma for 700 euro. Drove that. Then I drove my homegirl Mercedes. Um, my homegirl Mercedes Honda. She had a Honda Civic two door. I drove that. Then I came back, got my damn Tahoe. Drove my Tahoe until 2021 when niggas broke into it, broke the steering column, totaled that out, ended up getting a 2011 TSX, drove that till I moved over here, and then I got me a 2011 BMW, paid cash for it. So I'm the king around here. I'm the king around here, but I ain't even mentioned all the cutlasses and Monte Carlos I got because those aren't primary cars. But anyway, let's continue on. <laughs> let's continue on. Carlton introduces Amira to his parents. Now, remember, he was talking to Will, and they're like, all right, we're going to figure this shit out. He's like, all right, bad, but Amira's here. And he introduces her to the family. Now, Uncle Phil is cool. Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, the pops is always going to be cool with whoever the young man is bringing home. Now, it's very rare, unless she's, like, wilding out, that the pops is going to be like, hey, man, you got to watch this one. But for the most part, we look at whoever, I won't say we, because I ain't no father, but, you know, like, when I when I see who my nephews are, you know saying, dating and stuff, we look at, like, as long as they ain't wilding out, cool, because I'm definitely going to give my nephews a heads up. But my pops, he never been one. Just like Uncle Phil, he's like, hey, they said they just friends, that's it. Carlton will let us know if it's his girlfriend or not. But I'm Viv, she's like, oh, no, oh, no, having relationships Right out of rehab is bad. It's like, come on, Aunt Viv. Come on. We didn't say it was, I just introduced her as my friend. I've never introduced any woman to my parents as my girlfriend. Hey, this is such and such. I don't put no label on that. Just, hey, this is such and such. And meeting my parents, let me tell you something. Meeting my parents is not an honor. Meeting my parents, you just a regular person. Meeting my parents. Oh, girl, I met his parents. That don't mean a motherfucking thing. My parents have met so many people in their lives. Meeting you is just another person. But Carlton, he's happy. Amira, she's a recovering addict. She's a she'd have been in and out that rehab a couple times, though. That's the only problem. But Uncle Phil's chill about it. I'm Viv talking about you shouldn't be that close to Carlton. And she basically runs Amira off. She didn't say bye or nothing. She didn't say buy or nothing. That's one thing I can say. Hold on real quick, y'all. Real quick. Let me see. Hey, are you busy? Uh, I'm just riding. What's up? All right, I got you on live right now. So be careful what you say, Mama Mo. We got Mama Mo in the building, y'all. Hey, Mom. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, come on, Mom. You ain't got to call me, sir. Come on, Mom. Keep it real. What's up, son? Ask <laughs> me the question, son. Ask me the question. See, see okay. you don't have any online like customs and courtesies. You, now you're yelling. It, it, people on here, they laughing at me now. But no, I was just going to ask. So, I, so, but I, love you. <laughs> I love you too. So, let me say, because okay. we're, we're all right. So, we're watching Bel Air. You know, Mike, this is one of the sets that he cut hair on. So, you can understand. You know, Bel Air, Will Smith. Yeah. All right. So, the son Carlton is introducing a girl to his parents. Now, she's a recovering, I guess she's a drunk. I'm not sure if she's a drunk or, an, uh, or a junkie or whatever. But if I was to introduce a druggie, uh, an ex-druggie, let me say an ex-druggie to you, uh, how would you take that? Would you be like, okay, I, you trust your son enough to be like, okay, he has good judgment? Or would you kind of tell her, hey, you don't need to be with my son because you just got out of rehab? Oh, if she just got out of rehab? No, we both got out of rehab. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no. You both got out of rehab? 
like, you know, Gamblers Anonymous and two gamblers meet and then they get together and one says one day, well, let's just go buy some scratchers. All right. Well, let's just, why don't we just go to the casino for two hours? Nah. Who's, nah. Nah. I'd have to say no. But what if I really, I, I, what if I really like, I'm like, this is the one, mom. No. I'd have to tell you, no, she's not. And pray that you listen to your mother. No, I'm because listening. I'm, I'm listening to, I'm listening to my heart. Sometimes you got to listen to your heart. Listen to the beat. Listen to the rhythm, the rhythm of the street. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Sometimes when you listen to that beat, we hope you don't your heart don't stop beating when you make that big mistake. No, see, but, when I find that one, my heart's going to skip a beat. That's how you know it's the one. So when my heart stops, like, oh, that that was it right there. I call it a heart sweat, mama. Oh my gosh! But you can't. That's you guys are being dependent on each other. That's not going to work. No, that's that's, that's how we build. Work. See. When we're when we're apart, we're individuals. But when we're together, we're one. Yeah, one of y'all going just straight down the wrong path, and then the other one's gonna follow because you're one. No, nope. <laughs> no. Nope. All I right. Disagree. Now I just wanted your opinion because I was trying to see. I was trying to see if you'd be cool with it, but you were right. Just like I said, y'all, my what? pops. My dad wouldn't care. He wouldn't really ask. He'd be like, hey, I mean, if you happy, all right, cool. My mom no. be like, oh, no. Y'all both in rehab? No. <laughs> no, that's not good. I mean, you would have to find out for yourself. I know that. I know you would. But then I would never say I told you so. I would just support you when you had to pick yourself up. <laughs> just Hey, just, <laughs> just pick me up from rehab in about 60 days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nah. No son. No son. All right. That's all I wanted. Okay. All right. All love right. you. Love you too, babe. All right. So, see, I told y'all, Pops won't care. Pops would be like, all right, cool. My mama, oh no. Y'all both got a rehab? Oh no. Like, come on, Ma. This is real love here, Ma. Come on, man. But see, my mom would tell me she wouldn't tell the girl that because mom, no, you got to you got to get some cutty. You don't cut off the cutty. You cut the cutty. But that's neither here nor there. Let's continue on with uh, Callie Carl. <laughs> mom has the same sentiments as I'm Viv. Exactly, man. That's why I say, man, dad wouldn't care. Mom be like, oh, my God, she's a recovering addict and you are. I ain't no addict, ma. I just went in there. I, just, I got caught up in the bullshit. All right. Uh, so Carlton introduced a mirror, but a mirror runs off and she's distant. We know Carlton ends up going to another rehab facility. Well, it's not a rehab facility, it's just more of a I say, let's just call it alcohol anonymous. But what what uh what were they doing? I'm kind of I'm kind of confused. So, you guys remember when Amira called Carlton out, and there was the he he guy down there, and he's like putting his arm around Carlton, talking about hey, sit up front. Like, what are they? What are they doing with that character? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Hold on. What are they? What are they? What are they trying to do with this character? Because I, I don't even remember what his name was, but I, I I'm not sure what they're trying to do with this character. And what's his significance? Like, is he going to be a mentor to Carlton or? Y'all 
You know what I'm talking about? The guy that was at the meeting that had the knitted sweater. Like, what is his purpose? Nigga, why do you got your arm around me, nigga? <laughs> what up, OT? Yeah, what what is like what what are they doing with Spencer's character? Like, I know they're not introducing this to my boy Carlton. You know, like what 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 are they doing with Spencer? Because even when they was outside, when Carlton was hollering at a mirror, he was watching. I'm like, wait a minute. They not trying to push this guy onto my dog Carlton. Carlton, Carlton is he's a weird individual. He's a unique guy, but he's a heterosexual male. So I'm assuming that this guy is just like like OT said, just a hater. Because I was like, wait, what the fuck is going on here, Carlton? Is, Carlton, like, no disrespect or anything. Carlton got bitches. Let, let's be real. Carlton was knocking down Lisa before Will came and started dirty backing. Carlton got shorties. I said, I know they're not doing this to Carlton. Man, they better not do this to my young dog, Carlton, man. Like, I, I didn't know what they were doing with this. I forgot all about this until we were talking about, like, the major points. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you know me, I don't mind. You do whatever you want to do, but I'm trying to say, like, hey, like, that's where I got to draw the line. My nigga Carlton ain't never, Carlton, he may have been unique. We may have been like, man, this nigga's different. But Carlton was never a, he, he, he. hell no, nah, not my nigga Carlton. They can't do this to my dog. Maybe this guy's going to give Carlton advice, like, hey, you, you know what I'm saying, you need to go to the meetings, and he's just like a mentor or something. i like, man, I hope they not taking Carlton's character down there. That's not what Carlton does. That's not Carlton at all. I think he knows baby girl's past. See, that's what I was thinking. Like, when I say giving him advice, I'm thinking he's saying, hey, I know Amira. She might be too far gone for you. That's what I'm saying, like, as far as a mentor. Because i tell you one thing. As soon as, if I'm coming into this alcohol anonymous, hey, nigga, what the fuck you doing? Man, get your hand from off me. Nigga, I don't know you. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, we being real, I'm like, hey, nigga, what the fuck? Is, hey, nigga. And if I'm really on that, I got to start swinging. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this kind of meeting here, nigga? What the, the fuck y'all got going on? Nigga, I came here to get me some... You know what I get. I definitely ain't come here for that. I came here for that over there. What up, Amira? You don't fuck with your boy no more? What's up, Amira? It's me. It's Carl. It's Carl, baby. What's up? She talking about Carl. You better not be stalking me. I'm like, hey, man, nigga, the fuck going on here? I don't know where. I don't know. This must be Southern California. In the Bay, we niggas ain't that friendly. Nigga, put your arm around me. Who the fuck are you, nigga? But they can't be doing my Carl like this. My, not my nigga Carl. We call this nigga Cali Carl. I got to look in to see what this Spencer. Let me. We got to look up this Spencer character. <laughs> hey, chill, OT. I got to. I got to look up this Spencer character. We got to see what his damn description is because Spencer Bell Air. Because I was confused on what was going on because he was watching. He's got to know. Yeah, he just got to know about uh, old girl, man. That, that's what it is. It's got to be. He just knows about old girl's past. Or he knows that she's like really going through something. I'm trying to find what was is the end.
Because when I so what were you guys thinking when you when you seen this? Like You know, I'm on I'm on the spot. Get I'm I'm on, I'm on the spot right now. I'm going to grab all this stuff for y'all. Pause. You know what I mean? I'm on I'm on the spot with it. You know what I mean? I'm going to pow 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 pow. Don't nobody else do this online. I'm going to grab the screenshot for you right now. Fuck the bullshit. So he outside, he watching Cali Carl over. He's like, Man, that nigga over there kissing Amira. Amira must have turned him down and then he went to the other side, but I, I, I don't know what's going on, man. Hopefully he's just like a mentor to Carlton. Hey, Carlton, maybe maybe this is the approach you need to take with her. Just be careful with her. Cause I don't, I don't, I I mean, I don't know. I, I don't Hey, who am I to judge? But that ain't Carlton, man. Yeah, she recovering that. She been in rehab multiple times, OT. So you know she probably she got an SRT. She got a fucking Hellcat. She is she's of age. She probably like 23, 24, but you know that drugs, you know what I mean? Shit, you never really know though. No one is really feeling uh, Carlton in the mirror, which usually means the situation ain't going to work out. No, I think I think Amir is cool. Sometimes, like if we be like, all right, let me let me let me be real with y'all. Uh, let me let me. Uh, I'll, uh, fuck it, we here now. We got we got nothing but time because ain't nothing really else to crack off with Carlton. Yeah, ain't nothing really else happened with Carlton. You know. Um, they do the car thing. He falls in love with a mirror. She got the Hellcat. Niggas is just kissing random girls out here. But sometimes as a as a young man, like after you get older, after you hit about 26 as a yeah, probably like uh, yeah, 25, 26. As a young African American man, you start to look at life a little bit differently. But when you like 17, 18, man, you wow. All of us, we all just wow. It just, it's just something, it's just like human nature. Carlton been in the gym. Look at the triceps. This bicep, this nigga Carlton been working out over the summer. Okay, Carlton. But sometimes you need. Sometimes you need, listen to me, sometimes you need something wild on your side. Now, you ain't doing all this kissing and stuff, but you need something wild on your side. You feel me? That's just life. Nah, this ain't no wild. This ain't no wild, but it's just a regular SRT, Hellcat. Hellcat! Hey, hey. Look at her. She like, golly, that motherfucker loud. Look at this motherfucker over here. She's like, damn. Motherfucking loud pipes, big rims, water. That's what I like. Would you guys let somebody drive your Hellcat to race, like to drag race? Nah, I definitely don't think I would. Hell no. I got a cut. I think I could put my cut. Well, nah. Probably not no, excuse me, not no red eye. I definitely, my colors definitely ain't gonna be no red eye. But you just give me a regular, you just give me a regular SRT, not a Hellcat. Oh yeah, on its ass, boy. My goddamn colors gonna run that. Then they got the Corvette over there too. But yeah, that that's pretty much it for Carlton. Nothing's really happened to Carlton that's like too serious at the moment. He's been with Will. They confronted Frederick. They ran off from the, the damn police. He's with a mirror. Like they said, no one's really approving a mirror, but it is.